Basic music terms. Pitch, how high or low a note sounds. These five horizontal lines are the music staff. The higher a note appears in the staff, the higher it sounds. Piano music is written on the grand staff. That's these two music staves joined together. A ledger line is a short line used to extend the music staff when a note is so high or so low that it goes beyond the staff. A note head, this oval shape, placed either on a line or in a space in the music staff. This line attached to the note head is a stem, and a stem can point up or down. Sight reading is the act of playing a piece of music for the first time. Once you've played or sung it once, you are no longer sight reading. Melody is the leading part of a song. If you're singing, Mary had a little lamb, you are singing the melody. In simplest terms, harmony is the extra note or notes that support the melody. If someone else is singing, Mary had a little lamb, while you sing, Mary had a little lamb, you are singing harmony. Harmony also refers to the chords you might play while singing Mary Had a Little Lamb. Mary had a little lamb. A chord is three or more notes sounding at the same time. An arpeggio is playing the notes of a chord one at a time. It could be in order, or you could skip around. The Western musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it starts over with a higher set of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so forth. In most Western music, a half step is the closest distance between two notes. On the piano, a half step is the neighboring key. On the guitar, a half step is the distance of one fret. A whole step is made of two half steps. On the piano, a whole step is two keys away. On the guitar, a whole step is the distance of two frets. A sharp raises a note one half step. A flat lowers a note one half step. A double sharp raises a note one whole step. And a double flat lowers a note one whole step. A natural cancels out a sharp or a flat. Your A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are natural notes. An accidental is the generic term for markings like sharps, flats, and naturals. A step is the very next note up or down. A skip is anything bigger than a step. An interval is the distance in pitch between two notes. A scale is a series of notes that follow a set interval pattern within an octave. There are lots of scales. Most, but not all of them, are made up of a regular series of whole steps and half steps, the most common being the major scale with a pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half step. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. The very watered-down definition is that a mode is a type of scale derived from a parent scale. For example, the C major scale as normally played is also called the Ionian mode. If you take that same set of notes but play from D to D, starting on the second scale degree of C major, you are playing the Dorian mode. And there are other modes for the major scale and for most of the other scale types as well. The topic of modes is complicated and this is about basic music terms, so we're just going to leave it right there. Middle C is the C closest to the middle of a standard 88 key piano. It's written between the two staves of the grand staff, one ledger line below the treble clef or one ledger line above the bass clef. Both of these notes are played as middle C. A clef appears at the very beginning of each line of music. Depending on what clef the music is in, you'll be playing higher, lower, or more medium range notes. This is the treble clef, which is for higher sounding instruments. The top line of the grand staff is usually written in treble clef. The treble clef is also called a G clef. This little loop curls around the line where the G above middle C is written. 
Bass clef is for lower sounding instruments. The bottom line of the grand staff is usually written in bass clef. The bass clef is also called an F clef. These two dots show where the F below middle C is written. Tenor and alto clef are both C clefs. This little divot shows where middle C appears. Treble and bass clef are fixed, although they didn't used to be. The C clef can float around. If it appears like this, it's tenor clef. And if it's like this, it's alto clef. Most instruments are written in bass or treble clef, but the tenor and alto clefs are important if you play trombone, cello, viola, or are a conductor or a composer. Neutral clef, sometimes called percussion clef, is for non-pitched instruments like drums. Rather than each line or space being reserved for a specific note, each line or space in the neutral clef is reserved for a specific instrument. A system is two or more staves joined together by this line on the left. Most of the time you'll see a bracket as well. The music in any given system is all happening simultaneously. The grand staff is a system of two staves. A system in a full score can have any number of staves, from two staves for a duet to a whole bunch of staves for a band or orchestra score, which shows what every single instrument is playing at any given time. A bar line is used to divide music into small segments called measures. These are bar lines. These are measures. A double bar line is often used to show where one section of music ends and a new section begins. This double bar with the thin line and the thick line is a final bar line, which appears at the end of the music. Tablature, or tab, is a special kind of music notation specifically for stringed instruments like guitar, ukulele, or the bass. Each line represents a string. The top line represents the highest sounding string, and the bottom line represents the lowest sounding string. And the numbers represent frets. For example, zero on this line means to play the third string open. The number two on the same line means to play the second fret on the third string. And if the th numbers are stacked on top of each other, you're going to play all those notes at the same time. An articulation is a special mark that appears above or below a single note or chord telling you how to play that note or chord. There are plenty of articulations, but the two most common are the staccato, which means to play that note or chord short, and the accent, which means to play that note or chord more loudly than the surrounding notes. Legato means to play smoothly. This curvy line is called a slur, and it means to play legato, or smoothly. And if you're a guitar player, the slur is used to notate a hammer-on, or a pull-off. A key signature appears at the beginning of each line, telling which notes should be played as flats or sharps. In this key signature, every F and C is played as F-sharp and C-sharp. And in this key signature, Every B and E is played as B-flat and E-flat. An octave is a distance of eight notes. If you take, say, a G, the next higher G is an octave higher, or eight notes higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the next lower G is an octave lower, or eight notes lower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This comma is called a breath mark. If you're a singer or you play a wind instrument, it literally means to take a breath for phrasing. If you play a non-wind instrument like a guitar or piano, it means to add just a bit of space between notes as if you're taking a breath. This set of double lines is called a cesura. It means to come to a complete stop for a short time and then continue. A fermata or hold above a note means to hold out that specific note or chord for a while. This little marking is a let ring or let vibrate marking. It means to let the string or note continue to ring, and you'll sometimes see it paired up with an LV or LR marking. While pitch refers to how high or low a note is, rhythm refers to when you play your notes. 
A quarter note has a stem and a note head that is filled in. A quarter note usually lasts one beat, and for every type of rhythm there is a corresponding rest. This is a quarter rest, which is one beat of silence. This first measure is played one, two, three, four, while this other measure is played one, two, three, four, with rests on beat two and four. An eighth note looks like a quarter note, except it has a flag attached to the stem. Usually, you'll see eighth notes grouped in sets of two or four attached by a single beam. Eighth notes are twice as fast as quarter notes. So while quarter note is one, two, three, four, eighth note is one and two and three and four and. And this is an eighth note rest, which is a period of silence that lasts as long as an eighth note. Sixteenth notes are twice as fast as eighth notes. A single sixteenth has a double flag, and you'll usually see them grouped together with a double beam. While the quarter note is counted one, two, three, four, sixteenth notes are counted one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. And here we have a sixteenth note rest. A half note looks like a quarter note, except the note head is open or not filled in. While a quarter note lasts one beat, one, two, three, four, a half note lasts two beats, one, two, three, four. And this is a half rest, which is two beats of silence. This is a dotted half note, and this dot is an augmentation dot. A dot after a note means that you're adding half again the length of that note. So, while a half note lasts two beats, one, two, one, two, a dotted half lasts two beats plus one beat, or three beats. One, two, three, one, two, three. And a dotted half rest is three beats of silence. A whole note is a single open note head with no stem, and it lasts four beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. A whole rest is four beats of silence. It looks like a half rest, except it hangs down from the second line from the top instead of sitting on the middle line. A whole rest is also used to show an entire measure of rest regardless of how many beats are in the measure. Here's a dotted quarter note and a dotted quarter rest. The dotted quarter note lasts one and a half beats and is usually paired with a single eighth note counted like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. A dotted eighth note lasts three quarters of a beat as does a dotted eighth note rest. The dotted eighth note is usually paired with a single sixteenth note counted like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. An eighth note triplet is three eighth notes in the space of a single quarter note. Normally, you play two eighth notes per quarter note, one and two and three and four and, but when you see this number, it's three eighth notes in that space. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. A tie is a curvy line that combines two or more of the same note into one longer note. Swing eighth notes look just like regular eighth notes, except instead of playing evenly, one and two and three and four and, you play more long short, long short. Long short, long short, long short, long short. The only way to know if a song is to be played with swing eighth notes is the tempo marking at the beginning. A time signature appears at the beginning of your music. The top number tells you how many beats are in each measure, and the bottom number tells you what kind of note is counted as the beat. The most common time signature is 4-4 four, four time, four beats per measure, with the quarter note counted as the beat. In fact, it's such a common time signature that there is a thing called common time, which is the same as 4-4 four, four time. 3-4 time and 2-4 time are also fairly common. Most of the time, the quarter note gets the beat, so you usually see a 4 as the bottom number, but there are also time signatures in which the eighth note is counted as the beat. Cut time looks like common time, except it has a vertical line going through it. Cut time is also written as 2-2, two, two, two beats per measure, with a half note counted as the beat. 
At the beginning of your music, you'll sometimes see an incomplete measure. In other words, it doesn't have all the beats you would expect based on the time signature. This is a pickup measure. Tempo is how fast you play. A tempo marking appears at the beginning of your music right above the time signature telling you how fast to play. You might see a specific metronome marking. This marking means that the quarter note ticks along at 120 beats per minute. And this marking means that the quarter note ticks along at 80 beats per minute. You may also just see a term at the beginning telling you in general how fast to play. Retardando means to gradually slow down. Rallentando means pretty much the same thing. Accelerando means to gradually speed up. A tempo, and that's how it's pronounced, a tempo, means to resume whatever speed you were playing before a tempo change. For example, you might come across a retardando marking followed by a fermata or a hold. Following that, it's not uncommon to see an a tempo marking, which means to go back to playing whatever speed you were playing before you slowed down. A backward repeat is a double line with two dots facing left. It means to jump back to the nearest forward repeat, which is a double line with two dots facing right. If there is no backward repeat, you jump back to the very beginning of the music. Sometimes a repeat will include a first and second ending. The first time through, repeat is normal. The second time through, skip the first ending and jump directly to the second ending. DC means to jump back to the very beginning. DS means to jump back to the sign, which is this funny looking S. Al fine means to the fine or to the finish, which will appear somewhere in the middle of the written music. Al coda means to the coda, which is always at the end of the written music. So if you see DC al fine, you jump back to the beginning and then stop at the fine marking. If you see DC al coda, jump back to the beginning, and then when you reach the two coda marking, jump down to the coda. If you see DS al fine, jump back to the sign and then stop at the fine marking. And if you see DS al coda, jump back to the sign, and when you reach the two coda marking, jump down to the coda. Roadmap is a generic term for things like repeats, endings, DC markings, and so forth. Before you play a piece of music, it's always a good idea to check the roadmap so you don't get caught off guard by some type of repeat. Dynamics refers to how loud or soft you play. Forte means loud, piano means soft. Mezzo forte, medium loud. Mezzo piano, medium soft. The more Fs there are, the louder you play. The more P's there are, the softer you play. This forte piano marking means to start a note loudly and immediately back down to a soft dynamic level. Crescendo means to gradually play louder and louder. Decrescendo means to gradually play softer and softer. Diminuendo means the same thing as decrescendo. Hairpins are graphic representations of crescendos and decrescendos. Play louder and louder as the lines grow apart and softer and softer as the lines come together. I've got a PDF for you that covers this sort of material. Click the link in the description and scroll down until you find the Music Reading Basics PDF. It'll be in the Tips and Reference Materials section. And for more guitar lessons, music theory, and solo guitar arrangements, please subscribe.